Hey, this is Thinker Thugger, and this is comedian Jim Gaffigan, one of the funniest guys out there, usually. But recently I heard Mr. Gaffigan saying this. Because I've always had friends that are eccentric thinkers, and they're normally really entertaining. They're like, Bigfoot's real, man. Bigfoot is real. But that same person at one point during the pandemic was like, Tom Hanks eats babies. And the point Jim was making there, if you didn't get it, is that his go-to biggest and best example of a foaming at the mouth idiot is anyone who believes in Bigfoot. And that list includes pilots, military personnel, policemen, firemen, forest rangers, all trained observers who, along with myself and countless others, have had inexplicable encounters with something Jim is 100% sure does not exist. And I know Mr. Gaffigan will never see or even hear this because, you know, he's a big star and I'm nobody. But on the odd chance that he ever does, please, Mr. Gaffigan, allow me to appeal to your intelligence. I'm going to show you something that neither you nor any scientist in the world or anyone else can easily explain away but you're all more than welcome to try. Let's check it out. Okay, Jim, time to play Name That Species. And what we're looking at here, this is something I write about in my book. I make videos about it. I call these sonic fingerprints. It is the spectral analysis of four different vocalizations, all recorded at different locations here in the US and Canada. And if you fail to name this species, you will be admitting to the world that there are things out there that you can't explain. Neither can science. Are you ready? Listen closely. And if you've got a pet in the room with you, pay close attention to how that pet responds to these. Here we go. Let's listen to those one more time. And let me remind you, these were recorded in America. So they're not baboons or apes or gorillas or howling monkeys or anything like that. Here we go. give you a little more information there's something very very odd about these four vocalizations in fact so odd that these shouldn't exist in nature and that's the fact that all four of these vocalizations are just flat as pancakes there's no no modulating no variation in pitch up or down okay i, I doubt an opera singer a, a trained vocalist could make sounds like these where there wasn't some variance. Here's another quick listen. Could that possibly be a wolf howl? Well, let's go look. Just so happens I have two wolves howling right here. And these wolf howls don't look or sound a thing like that. Listen again. Wolf howls vary up and down, up and down in pitch. Again, these do not flat as pancakes. So it wasn't a wolf. What else? How about a pack of coyotes? Just happen to have a coyote here. Not even close. How about a dog howl? Not even close. Bear growl. No cigar. How about a mountain lion? Nope. Bobcat. Nope. How about a barn owl for something really creepy? 
Listen again. <coughs> Not even close. And now? <coughs> a fox geckling. A lot of people go, <coughs> ah, that's just a fox. Uh, no, no, it's not. And what a sad attempt this is. A last chance. A human woman screaming. Something you probably hear a lot at your shows. Just kidding. See, jokes are funny, Jim, aren't they? Um, but no, these sounds were not made by humans. They also were not made by Hollywood. Because the only way Hollywood has of making monster sounds is to take bears and lions and elephants and other things like that and layer them together. And if that were the case, we would be seeing remnants of all those vocalizations going up and down in pitch. <laughs> They're not here. So these four mystery howls over here on the far right are complete unknowns and they live right here in North America and other places all over the world. And I'll tell you what, it's a large species, a large unknown species with incredible vocal cords capable of making vocalizations that travel great distances at, at, at extreme intensities and freak people out when they hear these. So what are they, Jim? Again, if you can't name these, then you're admitting to the world that the world is not black and white and that there are things out there that you and science and skeptics simply cannot explain away. Check this out real quick. I took the wolf howls that we just heard and that crazy barn owl screech and fused them together, layered, th layered them together, have a listen made a new weird sound but look you can see the remnants of both here in their sonic fingerprint here's the wolf down here and here's the screech owl or the barn owl up here so these again were not faked or hoaxed okay jim here's a chance to redeem yourself this is the bonus round these footprints here this string here were found in Yakima, Washington. Now you can see that they've been there a few days and they've filled in some versus these over here that are fresh and deep. Okay. So here is your challenge. Put on some, these measure about 18 to 20 inches right here. So put on some big giant fake feet, go out into pristine snow or mud, your choice and walk in a long straight line like this. But here is the trick. You have to take a minimum of four foot strides between each step. Now it would take a giant human to do that. Someone seven, eight foot tall or taller. So if you would like, you can use stilts to try to do this. All right. But no, uh, no stumbling. Um, no, no crutches, no friends walking alongside you, because if you do, we'll see those missteps in the mud or the snow. And here's the real trick. Look how these tracks are laid out. Perfectly in a straight line. Humans don't walk that way. Our footprints are staggered. So with your giant fake feet, taking four foot strides, you have to walk in snow or mud like you're walking a tightrope and doing it without faltering. Okay, so again, I know Jim Gaffigan is never going to look at this. He's never gonna accept my challenges because skeptics fear new information. Their world is black and white and flat and they like it that way. But if they took their head out of the sand for five seconds, they would find that there are some things that they couldn't even begin to explain away, starting with those four banshees howling screams we just took a look at. But bottom line, ridiculing people for their beliefs based on ignorance, that's just barbarically stupid. And Jim, and I've been a fan for years, but please get some new material. Your Bigfoot jokes are hack straight out of the 50s. I mean, what's next? 
Whoopee cushions, rubber chickens on stage. Open your eyes, Jim. I mean, until you do, the joke's on you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Special thanks to my patrons and my YouTube members. Nothing I do would be possible without them. All right, everybody. Thank you so much.